Yeah, Angus is my name. I come from Galway, uh, born and raised there, lived there all my life. Um, so way back in the day I went to university in Galway and I started off a student internship with a company called MCS. Uh, and the company liked me and I liked the company and I've basically been there ever since. Under different guises because we're now part of Wood Group which is a much bigger organisation. So um, I'm going to assume you know nothing about Wood Group or the software product I'm going to introduce. So I'll give a background to Wood Group first and then uh, look at the software in more detail. Uh, okay, just, you know, th these are corporate slides. The, the first section is a corporate slideshow, then there's my personal slides. Um, you might notice the language that they tend to use in Wood Group. Because it's such a big organisation, you know, we are one, we are Wood Group. They're trying to present a united front uh, to customers. Because it's built up a lot of different businesses, components, constituent business internally. The vision of Wood Group, uh, to provide smart technical solutions which create and sustain value for our customers. I'm sure that slide in those few sentences cost a lot of money by some marketing executive team somewhere. Mm -hmm. Again, the idea is that whatever problems are uh, out there sort of in the energy, you know, predominantly oil and gas, but lots of other stuff as well, uh, would you can solve them. So anxious not to be considered just as purely oil and gas, but maybe a, an energy services company in terms of utilities and whatever uh, can deliver value wherever it's required. So a solution provider rather than an actual oil and gas or pigeon hole company. Taking a step back, Wood Group itself uh, formed in Aberdeen uh, in the probably the early part of the last century. Very small organisation started off uh, basically as a fishing uh, industry, basically fixing ships, moving on to maritime engineering. Looking at it now, uh, global coverage, uh, over 50 different countries, 30,000 people employed across the organisation. That figure would have been even higher if you move back maybe three or four years ago before the, the current recession hit the oil and gas industry. That might have been over 40,000 people. So very large and very diverse. So what exactly does Wood Group do? Um, there's a lot of, it's a, a very broad, very diverse. So oil and gas, you're probably familiar with from Aberdeen in the North Sea area here in Scotland. Uh, also onshore energy production. Oil sands is kind of... Um, more thicker, heavier fluid like bitumen, which you can get from open mining or drilling onshore. Uh, the offshore stuff is obviously just oil which you have to drill for and, and extract. Clean energy, um, David mentioned uh, score energy in Glasgow, which would be, I suppose, how Wood Group have, have evolved if they've acquired different businesses with different specialities. And score energy would specialise in renewables, so um, onshore wind and offshore wind also. Pipelines, be it uh, subsea pipelines or across land, um, processing, automation, industrial processes, and even onto utilities. So, for example, carrying water in a pipeline, it, it, it carries similar challenges as carrying oil or gas. This slide just kind of goes into a little bit more detail in terms of what Wood Group actually do. So, in terms of project, um, this would be engineering which we would specialise in in terms of the old days back in Galway and MCS and, and also the various MCS offices in Aberdeen and, and in Houston and so on. So front end engineering design, that's basic uh, kind of conceptual screening of what type of offshore structure you'd need. Then you get into detailed design phases. <coughs> when you design a structure for offshore you've got to design how you're going to get it there, how you're going to install it, when it's reached the end of life, how you decommission and take it back out of there. Um, Pipeline services, uh, mapping, routes, trenching, um, if it's on land you're going to have to get right away and there's a lot of legal aspects to it. Operations and maintenance, they can actually operate uh, offshore plant, so asset management, um, provision of labour, you know, actually getting people on board the rigs, maintenance, inspection and so on, training. So you're moving kind of gradually from sort of desktop sort of white collar engineering into more blue collar actual hardware doing doing things so industrial services like coatings uh, blasting insulation fireproofing all that type of stuff decommissioning particularly offshore is quite a complex process you've got very large pieces of equipment they've got to be moved around you've got to worry about interference between one component and the other a lot of detailed upfront planning needs there so very heavy lift vehicles uh, simultaneous operations happening going on at the same time so oh, we are energy, that's sort of the energy aspects of it, and then just looking at the diversity within Wood Group. Subsea, uh, we kind of touched on it there, pipelines and risers and, and, and so on, design and actual maintenance of those. Pipelines tend to flow along the sea floor, carry or flow lines, they tend to carry fluids horizontally, risers, 
would take you from the sleeve four up to uh, like a platform like a, a vessel or an oil rig. Asset integrity, this is more like uh, life management of, 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 of components, monitoring damage, uh, inspection, maintenance, planning, making sure that whatever is designed for say a 15, 20 year life actually lasts that long because you've done your maintenance checks regularly. Automation, uh, automating processes in terms of industrial um, fabrication and there's also um, vibration control and all that type of stuff. Renewable sector, uh, you know, when we think of renewables, we think about designing the turbine and making sure it gets the maximum amount of power, but there's a whole legal side of, uh, you know, where do you put the turbines, how do you minimize the environmental impact, how do you secure the necessary uh, permits to go about your business and all that sort of stuff, how do you finance it. So SCUR are a very strong consultancy service in this area. They do a lot of due diligence on other people's design as well as the sanity check. Digital solutions, this is kind of where I want to focus on today because it's the branch of Wood Group which uh, I'm involved in. We'll, we'll speak about that in a little bit more uh, detail in a moment. So basically Wood Group in terms of that 30,000 people, that's broken up loosely into Eastern and Western Hemisphere just for customer convenience and customer delivery. Uh, that would be considered mainstream operations of what Wood Group do day to day. Then there's another separate branch which is called Specialist technical solutions, which is more in-depth uh, domain knowledge in particular areas. Uh, and then the digital solutions is really the embodiment of that technical knowledge in software products, which is kind of where I want to kind of have a quick look at today. Uh, hopefully everybody with me so far. So, Wood Group, massive organization. Uh, now if we look at the branch of Wood Group that I'm involved in, digital solutions, Still a reasonably big organization, over 3,000 employees, uh, 50 or 50 offices worldwide, so quite a large spread. A lot of these are uh, trained engineers, so you have offshore mechanical, civil, uh, or chemical engineering, and also some software developers, which I would be kind of a crossover between the two. So I, uh, I have a degree in mechanical engineering and, and you know, a master's in offshore, but I never actually received any formal training in terms of software development. The sort of software I'm involved in, which you'll see in a moment, I'm more involved with um, codifying, uh, say, mathematical equations in terms of software. So I don't need to know how to build a front-end UI, which looks nice in Windows. I just need to program the back-end uh, to make sure that it crunches the numbers and gives the right answers. And even that I don't really do anymore because I'm more um, managing the team and visiting places and, and, and people like yourselves to, to, to a larger degree. So, uh, Wood Group Digital Solutions has got about 20 different software products, um, and this is some new branding that the company has come up with. So, the areas that we sort of focus on today would be structural analysis. So, if you look at these offshore structures out here, uh, be they rigid platforms, which we wouldn't look at too much because they're relatively stable and static, we're more interested in uh, risers, which are, predicting the North Sea, very flexible and they move about quite a lot. Okay and there's a whole host of other stuff like integrity management, corrosion modeling, uh, flow assurance, well integrity, um, even recently looking at data analytics, data analytics and mining of information and so on. So this is the area, so in all of these areas we've got different software products but these have all been developed in different locations across the globe and the ones that I know most about uh, are these three. So. Going to look at the Flexcom product, which is one which I'd be hoping to make available to the university here, which I've been speaking to David about. The other two are uh, derivative products of Flexcom, which specialise in certain areas. So Flexcom is very general purpose. These other ones are more specialised. Um, if we look at maybe a few videos here. Okay, and this is just to kind of say how the Galway office and our software products have evolved over time. So, I'm sure you get sick of listening to my voice uh, if I stay talking, so I'll throw in a little video, maybe to liven it up a little bit. So this is a traditional production system which you see offshore at the North Sea UK here, which would be reasonably shallow water, or considered shallow because it's maybe 100 to 200 metres of water, which is shallow in global terms. These lines here are called risers, which would take oil or gas from a wellhead up to a floating vessel. 
uh, because the sea states are quite severe in the North Sea uh, and the water is quite shallow, we need to use these flexible risers, which can bend the boat a lot, um, but they're quite stiff in the actual direction. This device in the middle is called the mid-water arch, and it's basically like a big buoyancy tank, which is on tethers, and the lines flow over the tank. The reason they do that is because the vessel moves, moves about quite a lot, and you don't want to transfer those motions directly into the, the flow lines or the connections that are on the seabed because you want that to remain fairly static. That's uh, one sample application of FlexCon. Um, as I said, which is the base product, which is the one maybe I'd be hoping you, some of you guys or, or maybe your colleagues might have used for in terms of research. Um, the other two are called <coughs> Deep Riser and Pipe Lay. Uh, so Deep Riser, it just specializes in terms of drilling risers. Those are production risers. So once you've got the vessel uh, in place, your well has been drilled and you've got oil flowing, then, then that's the type of system you have. Before that, you need to actually sort of drill some holes in the seafloor to see if there's oil there or not. And that's what Deep Riser looks at. Um, see if I can bring this one up. Okay, so this is a drilling riser. Uh, and obviously you can see by this very scale of it, uh, the vessel looks much smaller. That's because the water is much, much deeper. So what's happened in oil and gas is they tend to extract the easy stuff first, like the North Sea is relatively shallow, so the cost of, of, of putting the, the structure in place uh, is, is much less. This one is more, more deeper water, which might be typical of, say, the Houston area, the Gulf of Mexico, or, or the Atlantic East, Atlantic off Africa. Basically, this is just one big, long steel pipe, which is a drill string. Uh, down at the bottom, you've got the wellhead. And you've got a couple of components here called a blowout preventer and a, a LMRP, a lower riser marine package. That goes through uh, whatever kind of sand or sediment or bedrock is there down to the well. So what we're considered with is whatever is above this point. Um, and in this case, because it's such a long string and, and it's steel, it's very inflexible. So depending on what the environmental conditions are, sometimes they need to disconnect and stop drilling. And that's what's happened here. So they've just sort of literally disconnected and, and, and they're going to wait for a couple of days until the weather improves. Uh, normally they do that in a very controlled manner and sometimes they don't have time and it's an emergency disconnect and they just literally let it go and up at the top then you've got a, a recoil because the whole thing is in tension and as soon as it lifts off then it can kind of kick up quite a lot and that's uh, a complex area which Deep Riser models fairly well. Another different application. All of these could be done with FlexCon, but the other packages just make it a little bit easier in terms of user interface to set it up. Um, this is actually sort of installing a pipe or how you'd actually lay a pipe down in reality. Just for simplicity, we've omitted the device which is called a stinger, which the pipe flows off the back of the vessel with. Normally, you might want to model that. Here, we're just more concerned with modeling the interaction with the seabed, uh, seeing how the pipe deforms as, as you drop it down. So you can just see with stress concentrations in terms of uh, bending moment or bending stress, you can see where the pipe is deforming most. And if need be, you could take some, uh, you know, an alternative route, or you could do something differently to reduce those stresses. You'll see there on the right hand side there's a kind of a legend. So Flexcom is quite strong in terms of the animation of how it. This is just purely visual. All of the computations have happened in the background beforehand, but it's nice to kind of present it in a manner which looks, which looks cool on screen because that helps to, to sort of sell the software, basically in a nutshell. But uh, the traditional engineers wouldn't be too interested in fancy pictures, but uh, you'd be surprised at how important that is in terms of, of, of commercial aspects. Uh, okay, so that's the, 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 so FlexCom was the start product, then we have these two which are derivatives. These ones are actually further derivatives and they go a step further. So <laughs> what we've looked at so far, you would design in advance in your office, on, on your computer, in, in a, 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 you know, a desktop environment, based on uh, predictive analysis. So for various locations around the world, you know roughly what the sea sets are going to be for 10 or 50 or 100 year return period. But what if you wanted to actually analyze something live on board while you were doing it? If you looked at that drilling rig, uh, conditions instantaneous conditions over the course of a day or a couple of days can vary hugely over what you can simulate in advance. So that's what these two um, other packages do here. They're basically onboard versions of the deep riser and pipe layer respectively. Uh, I don't know if I've got a video of this here, but it's not really a video. It just kind of shows you uh, the desktop for what these other ones look like. Um, 
the main thing you focused on is really the vessel, where it is in space, how it's oriented, and uh, what the range of movement is. And that's kind of what's plotted here in this. It's, it's like a navigation chart to say, well, we can move. The optimum position is in the middle, usually, uh, and we can move a certain amount left or right, but within safe zones, which are indicated by color-coded circles. It's called watch circles. So if you move a little bit too far, or if the currents become too strong, then the, the flex joints, which basically connect the structure to the vessel at the upper end and the lower end, there's only a certain range of flexibility there. So if you exceed that, you know, it, the whole thing can just break down. So obviously you don't want to do that. These things are very expensive. The benefit of this type of software uh, for rig personnel is that um, the drilling ships themselves are very, very expensive. And I think, I'm not sure now, but they were probably retailing about half a million dollars per day. Just to, that would be the contractual cost of them. So in the old days, they'd be a bit more conservative. They'd say, you know, the weather is kind of getting too rough now. We'll, no, we, we have to abandon. But now with predictive software, you can stay drilling for longer with the added uh, confidence of having a numerical model behind it. Um, okay, that's uh, that's the sort of the, the software overview. Uh, then I can look into a little bit more detail onto one of those products, which will give you a flavour of what it actually looks like on screen. What we saw so far is the outputs. You know, that's what you present at the end. But how do you build the model and so on before that? Very quick history about uh, Wood Group's office in Galway. Uh, it was founded back as MCS, Marine Computation Services, many years ago, back in the 80s, and expanded to Aberdeen, which was kind of the hub in the UK here, and Houston, likewise, in America. Uh, became very specialist in, in flexible risers, which you saw in the first video there, and strategically acquired by Wood Group to expand their range of services or expertise in different areas. Okay, uh, I'm just going to briefly switch to uh, another slideshow. You might notice a slight difference in size here. I apologize. Uh, we've just gone through a rebranding exercise where we're supposed to use brand new corporate material, but I'm kind of still using a hybrid because we didn't have time to, to get the to get it fully uh, transferred over. Let's see how we're doing for the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to very quickly run through, give you a whistle stop tour of the software itself and hopefully by the end of it you'll have a flavour of what it's actually like or whatever. The picture on the right here shows a kind of ultra deep water system um, so this would be completely not typical of what you have here in the UK, it would be more go to Mexico. This is called a, a, a riser bundle, there's actually lots of different pipes attached to one steel carrier tendon with a buoyancy tank on the top. The tank is kind of kept below the wave zone, maybe 50 meters so that the waves don't interact too much with it. So this thing just basically sits there and then off that you've got uh, flexible hoses or jumpers which offload the oil onto the, the tanker itself. In order to extract the oil from that you probably need to have an offloading line which would be positioned with a buoy at the end of it and then you can plug in another vessel to take away when this one gets full. You know what I mean? What's not shown there uh, is mooring lines. That would probably be a spread moored vessel, so that the, uh, sorry, this would probably be a turret moored vessel. So this, the vessel is kind of hooked up to a turret, which has got mooring lines attached in different directions, and it can kind of spin around that turret depending on where the oncoming weather conditions are coming from. So minimize the motions of it. Everyone with me so far? Okay. Uh, okay, so Flexcom, it's, it's a structure analysis package. What we're really interested in is the, is, is the stresses in these type of lines. So the bending moments and the effective tensions are usually the drivers. Those uh, can lead to other derivative stresses like Vomises and, and the engineering codes which use those stresses as inputs. Mostly I'm interested in, in, the, in the structures. So risers, I'll just take back a step. Risers, uh, this is a steel riser but not typical. The other ones are flexible risers. Um, mooring lines, which I haven't shown, they'd be just like wire and cable usually to hold the vessel in place. These are jumpers, which are light flexibles. These ones here are called umbilicals, which are basically like power cables or control cables, which can all be modeled. So those are all traditional structural offshore oil and gas uh, applications. We'll probably look at renewables, because I know that's an area that uh, Edinburgh specializes in. we look at that sort of uh, later on. If we, if we have time. 
Uh, sorry, I just forgot to mention as well, if I'll probably send on the slides to David afterwards, but if you are interested in any more detail, uh, you'll get this in a PDF format, and then there's a little button at the top, so you can press that button, it'll take you to a web link, which you can read more detail about different aspects. That's what the software looks like. Uh, so, at first view, it looks like a, a mismatch of lots of different windows, uh, which it is, but you can shore, hide, or maximize, or minimize any ones you want. So what I'd normally have this on, if I've got two monitors on my desk, I'd have the, the structure view on the right-hand side, and then I'd, I'd have the input deck on the left-hand side. So they'd be quite big. I just showed more there, um, so you get an idea. Flexcom normally uses the kind of keyword-driven input, which uh, we look at in a moment. There's also a sort of a spreadsheet or table type input. They both do the same thing, but some people like to work with the keywords because when you get a bit of experience, it's much faster to work with the keywords. The tables are easier for beginner users, but they're a little bit slower. You, know, you can type very fast if you can. You know, I know most of these keywords. Uh, unfortunately, I know most of them off by heart at this stage. If you get stuck, you press the help button, and that pops up a help window, which I've shown there, which is quite small. Um, but that can be full screen or whatever. And we look at that Explorer view as a sample applications. Uh, I don't propose to show you these, but again, if you want, and there's about 10 or 12 different videos there which you can actually look at, and they just show different types of applications of the software. There'll be nice videos, kind of like the ones we looked at, but there'll be just different different types of structures, different type of analysis. Uh, don't we look at the, maybe the, the wave one towards the end, but apart from that, yeah, okay. Okay, that's the software itself. This just kind of gives you a bit of a zoomed in picture on what we saw earlier. Uh, so you've got a vertical section here, the buoyancy tank holds this, keeps the whole lot in tension. And the advantage of this type of system, even though it's very expensive, is that it doesn't take up much sort of floor space. It's quite narrow. So if you have a lot of different um, wells in close proximity in very deep water, what they do is they just simply line up a few of these in a row. So you'd have, this would be a bundle, but you'd have another one right next door to it, and so on and so forth. And they can all plug into a vessel. I'll just throw in this slide as well, just in case uh, people aren't, this is sort of a photorealistic image of what actually does happen, uh, subsea. This is uh, the UK, Scotland here, and this would be the Shetland Islands, so a little bit west of Shetland, there's a field called Shehalian, uh, which is owned by BP as the operator, and it's kind of coming to the end of its design life, or the, the platform that they put in place there, the FPSO need, and the mooring needs to be replaced. So Wood Group Engineering would have done a lot of work for BP and kept a lot of guys busy for a long time, over a number of years on this Quad 204 project. So that just shows you in more detail what's happening here. Uh, probably fairly complex, so there's lots of different tiebacks, different wells. Uh, these are flexible risers again. They have buoyancy units on them. Um, the other one we looked at earlier on had a, had a tank and that flew the lines over it. Sometimes it's just easier to put discrete modules on the lines themselves. Same effect. So the vessel moves up and down. It doesn't really do too much damage down here. And these are just sort of uh, plems or manifolds which allow the, the flow lines on the seabed just to sort of plug in and then the transport the fluid upwards. So if you wanted to model that thing in Flexcom, how would you go about it? Well, the first thing you do is you just take one line on its own and start drawing it like that. Uh, fairly easy to do. Basically, you just say where the start of the line is, where the end of the line is, and what the length is in between. If you've got different properties in between, you define those as different subsections. So. This is a very simple example. I've just got three sections. One is lower catenary, which is this piece. Then I've got the buoyant section. Then I've got the upper catenary. And the amount of inputs you specify is fairly limited um, because the software works out what that shape should be. And then when you press the run button, it actually does a proper finite element solution, which gives you an accurate representation of it. And it, it meshes as well. So if you need more elements in certain areas where there's higher curvature, you can kind of dictate that by the number of elements you want to use. That just shows you what the flexible rises are, really. Like so, in very deep water, they just use steel. It's a simple steel pipe with a certain wall thickness, and they, depending on how strong it is, they just make the pipe thicker. The problem with steel is that it doesn't bend very much. But if you're in really deep water, it doesn't really matter because you can just bend it really gradually, and it's 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 cheap. What you can't really use that 
in, in shallow water because you just wouldn't be able to get the curvature up enough to kind of plug it into the vessel properly. It just, it just wouldn't be feasible. So they use these flexible vices. Very expensive compared to a simple steel one because they're made up of composite cross sections. So if you've got one and you just cut it in two, this is kind of what you'd see. So there's different layers to do different things. So the, there's a pressure armor in the inside which resists the internal pressure of the fluid. There's an external pressure armor which resists the hydrostatic pressure of the of the external fluid, which could be in, I don't know, 100 or 200 meters water. Um, so it's quite rigid in terms of ovality or whatever like that. But because the layers are intertwined, they can kind of slip with respect to each other. So you can kind of pick one up and bend it nearly yourself. But then they have a, um, a tensile armor layer, which means you can't really stretch it. So it's quite stiff axially, but flexible in bending. And you just kind of take them off a spool. And then there's various kind of insulatings and, and buoyancy attached to that as well. Back to the software. Uh, most people tend to use this keyword editor. The reason, well, one of the reasons they do is because we've made the keyword editor better in recent versions. So now it's nicely color coded. So let's say you want to put in a fluid in the pipe, you go a star internal fluid. And then you hit the return key and then you're prompted with all the different sections which you defined in terms of lines, you get the names pop up like that. So there's a lot of uh, prompting and auto-completion. It's almost like a, a predictive text on your phone and you're texting, they kind of know what words you want. That's kind of what we've attempted to do there. If you make a mistake, it's quickly highlighted. Um, the parameter stuff is, 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 is a more of a newer feature, which um, allows you to, to define a set of kind of hand calculations at the start before you do the actual model itself. So, for example, if I wanted to model uh, bending stiffness, this would be sort of Young's modulus times uh, the, the moment of area. So the moment of area itself is derived from diameter, diameter derived from diameters which you could plug in. So you can kind of build up almost spreadsheet type functionality within your input file, which is really good for QA because somebody <coughs> can come along and read your work and say, yeah, that's okay, or I agree with that, or you've made a mistake here or there. The beauty of this is because you do it once and it's done properly, you can just copy and paste that into different models as well. Uh, another nice functionality is that you've got units built in, but there's also unit conversions. So if you're looking carefully there, you might notice that the Young's modulus and shear modulus are in metric. Density is metric, but these diameters are curiously just typed in in inches. So how does that work? Uh, because this is a metric file, everything is expected in metric. So if I start putting in imperial units, what it does automatically is it transforms those into base units in metric and then goes on and does the computation. So you say your cross section area there would be in meter squared, even though the average is popped in in inches. Just kind of handy stuff to make it easy for the user. Uh, if you make a mistake, like when you try and convert meter into kilogram or something silly like that, it'll stop immediately and say that's not possible. Um, Again, looking at the same model, just to give you appreciation of this is the sort of subsea architecture right down at the bottom. Um, so they've got to get the oil from a horizontal you know, flow line up into something that goes vertical. They do that using these spools, um, which are basically rigid sections of pipe. Um, they're rigid because the pressure at that depth is fairly enormous, so they have steel, steel sections to connect, but they, they have them in uh, fabricated in such a way that they're, they look sort of snake-like, they twist and turn, and that gives a small bit of flexibility, so when the tower moves back and forth ever so slightly, they can kind of absorb that motion. Uh, okay, uh, doing okay, and keep, keep an eye on the clock, because I know you guys are, have got, to, got other stuff to do too, but we're doing fine. In terms of solution technique, uh, Flexcam uses the hybrid beam element, uh, hybrid in the sense that it solves for displacements, which are movements, and also solves directly for um, axial force and torque within the element as solution variables. It does that because um, with rigid pipes, or let's say the flexible pipes, they can be very flexible in bending, but very stiff axially. Uh, so they mightn't stretch very much in the axial direction. So in terms of getting the axial force right, you'd be looking at maybe multiplying a very, very high axial stiffness and very small displacement and you can get numerical kind of corruption or problems in the solution. So that's why we solve for that directly. Uh, geometric nonlinearity, basically those 
pipes move about a lot in space, but they don't really bend that much. They, a lot of it is rigid body motion. So what we do is we separate out the rigid body motion from what's called the elastic deformation to the stress-inducing deformation to get the right answer. And that's a kind of a unique solution technique uh, to FlexCon. FlexCon, what can it do? Well, static, time domain, frequency domain, fatigue life. Uh, I don't need really need to go into any of that too much, except just to say at the bottom, if there's something that FlexCom can't model, then there's an opportunity for you to write your own code and plug it into FlexCom, which makes it more generic. Um, if you've, any of you used Abacus for more detailed structural simulations, that's something that Abacus user community are very, very strong on. They, they allow you to plug in your own solution, integrate that fully with the product. We wouldn't have a user base like Abacus would have, but the, the, the idea is similar. Um, Post-processing, so that's your, 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 your model definition, you run the solution, and how, how do you get the answers back out. Um, what I've showed you there in the videos is the model view, which is nicely color-coded. You can pick out any parameter like tension or shear force or curvature and plot it graphically, uh, which is, I think, unique to FlexCom in terms of these oil and gas programs. You can also click on elements and see what the properties are, so you can do a QA check afterwards. Post-processing, you can get plots. Uh, which is you know, basically time histories or maxima and minima. But normally for, uh, or, you know, let's, say, let's say a wave energy converter, you're not looking at one wave. You're probably looking at a broad spectrum of different frequencies. You're also looking at that from different directions. So really you're not interested in, in one plot. What you're interested in is, let's say, what's the maximum power the device produces for a wave of this period. And then you want to show that maybe as a function of different periods or different wave directions. So you can do these 3D plots, which are very useful. These ones are useful if you want to interrogate a model which, or one simulation which is maybe problematic. This gives you a lot of detail. This gives you a much better overview. Uh, with post-processing, if you're not happy with that, you can just use Excel. So there's a direct API in interface to Excel, which means you can take the numbers directly into Excel. If you don't like FlexCom, you can do your own thing. Uh, one, the, one company which uses Flexcom, they really don't use the software in the conventional sense because they've got all their pre, -post -post, pre and post posters written themselves and they won't deviate. So they just turn on their own stuff. It runs Flexcom, they never really look at it, and then they take out the answers themselves in their own way. That's for more advanced people if you, if you really want to do that. The videos I showed you, uh, there's a little video pack in the software. So you can, it's just purely cosmetic. It looks cool, it doesn't add anything to your answers, but it, you know, if you have a unique design, it helps you to kind of sell the design. So you just basically have a series of camera positions and you move around those in space over time. It makes a nice little video, very quick and very easy to use. And all the ones there I showed you in the list, I kind of created those myself with a, a student, an intern, a guy who made lots of those very quickly and very cheaply. Uh, this is just another benefit of the parameter kind of idea I showed you. You can define a parameter. So normally you just use that for hand calcs, but if you want to actually, let's say, define a parameter for wave period and direction, then you can vary those. And from one input file, you can generate like a hundred or a thousand, depending on how many cases you need to, to generate. That's kind of what you, you can do here. And you can easily put them in different folders, and that's all pre-programmable -program very easily in, inside the software. That's regular waves. You're not usually looking at regular waves. Sometimes you're looking at a scatter diagram. And again, you can pull that stuff from Excel and spit out all the files you need very easily. There's examples in the software. Again, if you start looking at the software and you use it, you can uh, press that I symbol and it'll tell you how to do it exactly. This thing I just showed uh, briefly at the start, it's like Explorer. It just shows you all your files, but it just shows you, you know, this one has ran okay. Uh, this one, it ran fine, but, you know, somebody came along and changed some of the inputs, so now it's not really valid anymore. That just is like a handy thing for QA. Uh, latest news, not terribly useful for you guys because you don't have the software yet, but uh, <coughs> we'll just quickly look at renewables, I think, because that's one of the areas we're working on at the moment, or beginning to work on. Uh, plastic deformation is something else we're looking at. So normally, the models, like you bend them and let them go, they'll go back. You know, so, so loading and unloading is along the same path, but with plasticity you get you know, residual strains and so on. Uh, just don't want to keep you too long, so I'll try and skip through these very quickly. Um, normally in oil and gas, you've got a very big, heavy vessel, and it just moves 
in a certain way regardless of how many lines are attached to it. That's usually what's called a displacement driven problem. That's not what you'd have here for renewables because they're smaller and lighter and depending on how many lines or whatever is attached to it. So you pop that into the solution as well itself rather than you put on forces rather than putting on motions. These are the type of forces you can put on effects calm, current, wind, forcing functions, uh, added mass and damping we do using this convolution integral technique. Anybody who's familiar with uh, the WEX will know what that's about and it's reasonably good. What we do is reasonably good but it doesn't, it's a linear approach which basically means that we assume that the variations of the body with respect to the mean water line are fairly small so that if it, you know, if it did really tip over quite a lot then you're still using the same forcing functions as you were doing at the mean position which is not really entirely accurate. It's probably fine for oil and gas, not so for WEC or, or th those type of maybe floating wind turbines. That's an area which we need to improve on. Quickly show you that, I suppose if I can bring up a video here. This is one of the sort of... Uh, Trekcom hasn't been used terribly often yet in terms of renewable energy. This is one example of where it has been used. This is called the Duo device, which is developed by uh, Pure Marine Gen in, in Belfast. There's two, two oscillating bodies and basically the way that they move with respect to each other uh, drives these kind of um, pre-tensioned linkages and that's how they extract the power. So this thing was modeled successfully in Flexcom uh, and it's has, it's, 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 a, it's a finalist in the US Department of Energy Wave Energy Prize which is very similar to what you have here in Wave Energy Scotland but just a different form and uh, I don't think they're going to get first place in, the, in, the, in this uh, category because uh, there was some problem with the instrumentation and the tank testing so while the performance of it is, is very good and very promising uh, I think they didn't have enough information coming out of the tank test to actually really sell it but it, it's still in development it's a scale model I think it's uh, it's certainly one of the 50th scale and I think the next step would be to take that if they get the funding to a bigger scale whether that's going to happen or not I don't know but that will be announced fairly shortly I think um, ok shut that down uh, and then this is the Albertan model which uh, they modeled Albertan don't really use Flexcom but they used it on a trial basis and they just allowed me to show some screenshots but they aren't actively using the software I'll just make that clear whereas the Pure Marine Gen are actively using our software Albertan are not but I just thought it was nice to show the video or the, the few screenshots just to show you how detailed the model is I don't think uh, and I'll, I haven't spoken to the guys there for some time but at the time this model was quite basic and they didn't really look at the hydrodynamic coupling between the different devices in space so you assume the wave field was undisturbed by the presence of the bodies which is not realistic but I don't know if they got a chance to, to take that forward or not and I think David mentioned that they've done uh, some tank tests here which is in, in the flow wave facility floating wind we haven't we're just basically starting to do some work on that so we can model the floater you know and the mooring lines and stuff and so on the aerodynamics we're looking to couple with another software, uh, FAST, which is the InRail software from America, which models the aerodynamics. If we can do that, we might have a fully coupled solution. I think that's my final slide, uh, so thank you for your attention. That just is a quick list of some of the colleges which use uh, Flexcom, some more so than others. Um, Strathclyde there in Glasgow would be a very good users for us. I'm, I'm going to go there tomorrow and give the guys a training course in it. Uh, and these two in Houston, Texas A&M and the University of Houston, they would use it quite a lot as well. Uh, I think the University of Western Australia, we've got quite a lot of users there. The others, I'd say maybe one or two guys in each, in each college, not by no means integrated into their programs or anything like that. That's it. Uh, that's my email address. If you ever need to contact me, I'll probably send the slides on later on. But thanks very much for your attention. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.